Hello, we're here at the University of New South Wales, and I'm Norman Wahlberger. We're in Chapter 3 of the Linear Algebra Problems here, and this is Question 22, which has a number of parts about uh, complex conjugation and the relationship with the length squared of complex number. So Part A asks to show that the product of Z times its complex conjugate Z bar is the length squared, or the modulus squared of Z. And hence, or otherwise, we're asked to show that if the modulus of Z equals 1, then the complex conjugate of Z is actually the inverse of Z. All right, let's have a look at that and see if we can uh, make some sense of that. OK, so uh, we're talk about an abstract situation here with Z and a general complex number. So let's let uh, Z be, say, A plus IB to be uh, specific. All right, well, and then we know what the complex conjugate is. Z bar is A minus IB. And so when we multiply Z times Z bar, We're going to get a plus ib times a minus ib. And that's a difference of squares kind of thing. You get an a squared. And we're going to get an ib times minus ib. That's b squared times i squared times minus 1. The i squared being minus 1 gives us a total of b squared. And the imaginary part here is 0 because the a times minus ib term and the a times plus IB term exactly cancel. So the complex number Z times its complex conjugate Z bar is A squared plus B squared, which we recognize as the square of the modulus, because the modulus is defined to be the square root of this quantity. I might mention that this is what I like to call the quadrants of the complex number. It's just another algebraic term that uh, measures the size. It's a little bit more algebraically uh, pleasant than the actual modulus itself, which involves a square root. OK, what about the second part, that if the modulus of z equals 1, then z bar equals z inverse? All right, so if the modulus of z equals 1, then, well, from what we've just established, z times z bar will be equal to the modulus of z squared, which will then be 1 squared, or 1. Which is telling us, therefore, that z times z bar is 1. So z bar is the inverse of z. And let me draw a little picture for that. So here is our complex plane, x y-axis, maybe a 1 and an i there. So if we have a general complex number z equals a plus ib, then its reflection in the x-axis is the complex conjugate. That's a minus ib. So the real part, which is a, stays the same, and the y-coordinate becomes negative. And the second uh, part here, we're saying that if we have a complex number which is lying on the unit circle, in other words, it has modulus 1, right, so there is complex numbers with modulus 1. In that case, let's put, uh, let's choose a z, that's in red, okay, and then here is its complex conjugate. So here is, uh, complex number z, which lies on the unit circle, and has modulus 1. And here is its complex conjugate, which in this case actually equals the inverse of the, uh, the complex number z. So if you multiply this z times z inverse there, you're going to get 1. All right, now let's have a look at part b, which we'll do here. So let's show that the modulus of z equals the modulus of z bar. Okay, so the modulus of z, carrying on with our notation, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. 
And if we take the modulus of Z bar, which that's the modulus of A minus IB, that's square root of A squared plus minus B squared, which is equal to the modulus of Z because minus B squared is the same as B squared. All right, now for the third part, part C, we're asked to show that if Z is in polar form, so R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. So now expressed in terms of an angle in this picture, the angle would be that one there, and the modulus R, then we're supposed to get a formula for Z bar. Well, we can write down what Z bar is because we know that we just have to negate the imaginary part. So that's going to be R times cosine theta minus I sine theta. We've just negated the imaginary part to get the complex conjugate. And now we observe that we can rewrite it this way. We can write it as R times cosine of minus theta plus I sine of minus theta because because we know that cosine of minus or cosine of minus theta, oh yes, equals cosine of theta, and sine of minus theta is minus sine of theta. So this cosine of minus theta is really the same as cosine of theta there, and this sine of minus theta is the same as minus sine of theta. That's allowing us to go from here to here. That minus sign changes the plus sign because of the minus sign in there. And geometrically, what this is telling us is, in terms of the, of the picture here, if there's the complex number z and there's its angle or argument theta, then the complex conjugate over here, down here, have, will have the same r, but the angle now is the negation of the previous one. So instead of going up by a certain number of degrees, we're going down by the same number of degrees.